close your eyes. Take a couple of good long, deep in and out breaths. Notice where the sensation of breathing is most prominent in your body. It might be in the chest, the abdomen, it could be anywhere at all in the body. Wherever you're most sensitive to the breath, focus your attention there. Then ask yourself if it's comfortable. If long breathing feels good, keep it up. If it doesn't feel good, you can change. Try shorter breathing or in short, out long, in long, out short. Fast, slow, heavy, light. Deeper, more shallow. Get a sense of what the body needs right now and breathe that way. And if the mind wanders off, you don't have to follow those thoughts. You can just drop them and come back to the breath. Leave the thoughts unfinished. You've got more important work to do here. You're training the mind. You're training the heart at the same time. In all the different languages of Asia, where Buddhism has gone, the words for heart and mind are either the same word or else they're interchangeable. Because there's no clear distinction between the two. The things you think about, the things you want, the things you're sensitive to, they're all connected. And so when training the mind, we're also training the heart. This is why when the Buddha, when he started teaching, ordinarily wouldn't start out right with emptiness or with not-self or dependent core rising. He'd start out with generosity, which is a matter of the heart. And from there he would teach you about karma, how generosity has meaning because of karma. It's because we have the freedom to choose our actions, because people are worthwhile. That's why generosity has meaning, why it is a virtue. If we didn't have choices in our interactions, and giving a gift would be an automatic thing that was determined by somebody else or something else, it wouldn't have any meaning at all. But it's because we do have choices in the present moment. That's what the main emphasis of karma is, the choices we have, whether they're skillful or not skillful. It's because we have those choices that generosity is meaningful. At the same time, the act of generosity teaches you something about freedom of choice and also your freedom to say no to greed, aversion, delusion in your mind. It's your first taste of freedom. Then building on that, then the Buddha would teach you about virtue and then teach you about meditation. Because the qualities of the heart are also involved in gaining insight and gaining concentration. So we're training not just the mind, not just our concepts and thoughts about things. We're also training our desires, our aspirations, our sense of what really is important in life, and particularly how we can put an end to the suffering that we're causing. So when you train the heart and mind together like this, the mind teaches the heart the principles of cause and effect, and the heart teaches the mind what's really important is the fact that even though we want happiness, the things we do often lead to suffering. We want to know why that is. And that's the big problem to solve. So as you're training the mind and training the heart here with the breath, bring them together, and that way they both grow. <laughs>